Hello folks, and we're back for part two of our fundamentals. When we left off, we were talking about power. We had already defined current and voltage. We said current was the rate of charge flow. So current I charge Q over T. So we said that one amp is equal to one coulomb per second. And then for voltage, V, we said that was the work or the energy that you put in to move said charge. So one joule per coulomb, one joule over one coulomb is one volt. Then when we multiply these two things together, we say Q over T times W over Q. Q's cancel, and we end up with W over T, right? energy per unit time, which is power. So we can say that power is equal to current times voltage. Right, that's where we left off. All right, three really useful formulas here. Okay, so coming up from power, the next big question is, what about efficiency? Well, let's get a good definition of what efficiency is. First of all, efficiency, we use the Greek letter eta. Use capital E for voltage sources, which is short for electromotive force or EMF. So we can't use an E. We're just going to use uh, the uh, eta here. This is defined as the power you get out versus the power you put in to get it, right? What did you have to put in to get this output? Obviously, the higher the efficiency, the better. In an ordinary system like this, efficiency can never be greater than 100%, can never really be equal to 100%. That would assume that there's no loss in the system. You can think of this graphically like so. Think of the input splitting into a couple of pieces. And this is your useful output power. And then this extra piece kind of peels off out here. This is the waste. All right, so you want to minimize this. Minimum waste, maximize the amount that you get for P out. All right, so bigger efficiency is better. So if we said that the efficiency was 90%, if we threw 100 watts in, then we're saying we get 90 watts out. And by extension, 10 watts worth of waste. Which, in the case of an electronic system, that's heat. And heat is very damaging to semiconductors, so we don't like that. Now, on the other hand, if we had an efficiency of, let's say, 99%, you wouldn't think that's a great improvement. I should say 100 watts in, you'd get 99 watts out. And you'd say, well, 90 to 99, that's only a 10% improvement. What's that? But if you look at the waste, it's only one watt waste. So as far as like the cooling load that would be required for the transistor, that's a factor of 10, right? 10 watts waste versus one watt waste. So yeah, definitely go with the 99%, right? That's much better. So consider as, in a, as a, a comparison, right? An incandescent light bulb versus an LED light bulb. So we're going to look at the cost of energy here. We call it the power company, but it's not really the power company. It's the energy company. That's what you buy. You buy energy. So typical unit for that is kilowatt hours. That's basically kilowatts times hours. So we know our power is measured in watts. And you're basically saying, okay, a kilowatt hour would be a thousand watts in one hour or a hundred watts in 10 hours or 50 watts in 20 hours. You know, whatever the product is, it gives us a kilowatt hour. 
that's sufficient. Could be one watt and a thousand hours, right? That's what they're going to charge you. They don't care how fast you use it. It's just the total amount of energy that is delivered to your home or your business. Typical rate, you know, uh, depends on where you live, local rates and so forth, but as a ballparky kind of number for our calculations, let's just say it costs 15 cents per kilowatt hour. Okay. 15 cents or $0.15 per kilowatt hour. Okay, so I'm going to use an old style incandescent light bulb. 100 watts. Now, what's really important about a light is the amount of luminous, um, luminous intensity that we get. You know, how, how bright is the light? So I would be interested in uh, if the 100 watt light bulb, that's probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 1600 lumens, right? Lumens is what you're looking for as far as the brightness of that light. Now, a um, typical 100 watt light bulb is probably 5-ish percent efficient. So 95% of the energy that goes into it gets turned into heat. That's true for most incandescent light bulbs, you know, 75, 60 watt, whatever. It's probably only about 5%. 95% of the, of the uh, power input turns into heat. So it's a more effective heater than it is illuminator. Right? Kind of crazy. An LED, on the other hand, is much more efficient, maybe 10 times that. You know, maybe it's 50% efficient. But anyway, so let's say we have an incandescent light bulb. Um, it's 100 watts. And we're going to use this typical life span for an incandescent light bulb would be uh, a thousand hours. All right, so over the course of the life of that bulb, you've got a hundred watts times a thousand hours. You get a hundred thousand watt hours, which is equal to 100 kilowatt hours. Now, if that's 15 cents per, right, 15 cents per kilowatt hour, you get 15 cents times 100, that's going to cost $15 worth of electricity to run that light bulb for its life, right, before it burns out. Now I turn around and like I said, I get an LED, which is an equivalent to a 100 watt light bulb. That's probably only going to burn up 15 watts. In other words, both of these things are going to produce maybe 15, 1600 lumens, equally bright. Now, if I run that thing for a thousand hours, right, you multiply this out, that's 15 watts times a thousand hours, that's 15,000 uh, hours or 15 kilowatt hours. Now, you multiply that by our 15 cents per kilowatt hour, you're only looking at $2.25. Now, that's a pretty large change there. Now you, you might argue, oh, but you know, LED light bulbs are more expensive than incandescent light bulbs are. I can get these things real cheap. Yeah, that's true. However, those lights only last about a thousand hours. Even really inexpensive, you know, I would say lower quality LEDs are probably going to last 10,000 hours. And a decent quality one is going to be more like 20, 25,000 hours. In other words, you'd have to buy a couple dozen incandescent light bulbs to last as long as one LED. And when you get all done with this, you know, even over the course of, let's say, 10 light bulbs, let's say you had a 10,000 hour LED, right? You have to multiply all this up by 10. So that's $150 in electricity versus $22.50 in electricity. Wow, that's way more than the cost of the lights. All right. Okay. An obvious, I hope, an obvious change. But it goes way beyond that. Because there's an 85 watt difference here per hour. Over the course of the incandescent light bulb, you're talking about an 85 kilowatt hour waste. Where did that energy come from? Right? You know, we had to perhaps burn some fossil fuel, coal, oil, whatever, 
um, in order to create that. So, you know, there's there's sort of a double whammy here, right? It turns out to be more expensive for you, and it's worse for the environment. Okay, where do we go from here? We can talk about efficiency with all kinds of devices. You know, I could have um, an audio amplifier like my home stereo, right? So I'll just draw a little box here. Have some knobs on it. And, you know, I, um, I think of the input, of course, is, you know, maybe a CD player or something like that. But in our power calculation, the input is the AC power. And the output, you know, we think of that as music, but on the power end, it's the loudspeaker. So let's say, round numbers, I have a, an amplifier that's a stereo amplifier, and it's um, 100 watts per channel. So that's 200 watts total. That's what it's capable of. Of course, for ordinary use, you would be operating nowhere near maximum. But let's, you know, let's keep this kind of simple. So you've got a potential of 200 watts of electrical output going to the loudspeaker. What's the input power? Well, that depends on the design of the amplifier. And this is something we look at in a semiconductor course. But, you know, a typical run-of-the-mill amplifier might only be, you know, 60% efficient. 70% efficient, something like that. In which case, to get 200 watts out, you got to pump in 300 watts. So what happens? Now you got 100 watts worth of heat over here. That makes the transistors hot. Again, we don't like that. You know, uh, heat is an enemy of semiconductors. I'd prefer not to do that. There are more modern designs that uh, can really drastically um, improve the efficiency where we have uh, an amplifier that's maybe 90% efficient, okay, 95% efficient. So to get that 200 watts out, we may only need to draw, you know, 210 watts, 220 watts. Hey, instead of 100 watts burning up, we're only talking, you know, 10, 15, 20 watts. Well, that's a tenfold improvement. To make things more interesting, you know, we have to talk about the conversion efficiency of the loudspeaker itself. Loudspeakers are among the least efficient things you have in your home. So to go from this electrical input to an acoustical output, the conversion efficiency on a standard home loudspeaker is probably only around one, maybe 2%. So we pump in 200 watts all right, into our pair of loudspeakers. If it's 1% efficient, 200 watts electrical coming in only turns into two watts acoustical going out. So you can multiply these, these efficiencies or inefficiencies as the case may be. So the amplifier itself might be, you know, 65% efficient, 0.65 as a factor. And then the loudspeaker is maybe 1% efficient, right? 0.01 as a factor, you would multiply those two together. And now you've, you're looking at like, you know, two thirds of a percentage point actually turns into useful output power that you can hear. Obviously, if we could make much more efficient loudspeakers, uh, you could operate this thing on, you know, a little battery and it, you could fit it in your pocket and you could fill up an entire room with sound, right? That would be great. Okay, more next time.